Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I always wanted to say that, okay. Uh, my name is Hubert Wawrzyniak. Uh, I've been dealing with uh, usability and user experience for seven years now, formerly in Symmetria, which is an agency from Poznan, and right now at Autodom.pl, uh, the largest real estate classifieds website in Poland. Um, so this year's World Usability Day topic is engagement. And probably when we think about engagement, we picture users interacting with our product. And that is absolutely correct. Uh, but I want you to think about engagement from a different perspective. I want you to look at it under a different light. I want you to look at it from a perspective of team. So people who create product or, and service. And I hope that after this short presentation, you will share this uh, belief with me that uh, only as an engaged and consumer-focused team, we can create engaging in products and services. So let's start with how to become engaged in your work. And first and foremost, I guess you have to believe in what you do, right? It's uh, just like, Simon Sinek said in his uh, TED talk entitled, How Great Leaders Inspire to Action. Uh, he introduced the golden circle and uh, Igor already mentioned the, the, the idea. So, the, so we have uh, three questions, uh, what, how, how and why. And the very important thing here is to start with the why question. Because if you want to believe in what you do, you have to know why you are doing this. So it works very well on the high level, on the vision level, but it works very well uh, on operational level, when you're actually sitting down and get to work. Let me give you an example. Um, probably some of you experienced a situation where business owner approaches a team with a list of tasks to do. And he says, hey guys, uh, so this month we have to do this functionality, uh, this, uh, the other month we have to do uh, three more functionalities and so on. And if you're lucky enough and ask why, you'll get the answer. Well, you know, we have to raise our conversion by 40% next six months. Okay, so you have the answer to the to the why, to the business why, because uh, everywhere there is a product, there is business behind it, well, most cases. So you have the answer to the question why, but what happens next? The business owner leaves and people start to talk, and I know this from my own experience. People start to talk, hey, okay, but why exactly those two functionalities? Isn't there any other better way to reach this goal? I have so many other ideas, right? So you end up with a situation where people don't feel involved. They don't feel like they have any influence on what is going on. And you don't want that because they are not engaged. So this is where impact mapping comes in hand. Impact mapping is a planning technique developed by Gojko Ajic, and it has two main characteristics. It is collaborative, and it starts with why. Collaborative means that you gather, gather people with different set of skills and experience in the room. So you have marketing specialists, the business owner, some developers, uh, UX person, um, and uh, customer service. Do invite those guys to such meetings because customer service specialists, they have enormous knowledge about users. They are talking to them eight hours a day. So they really know them and they have great ideas, so do invite them. So when you have all these people in the room, you can start to create an impact map. And what it is, uh, it has four layers. It has the goal, it has actors, it has impacts and deliverables, so functionalities. And those four layers answer four questions. And those are why, so we have a goal, so why we are doing this. And this is a business why, once again, so it's, uh, there are numbers and money behind it. 
uh, we have actors. So who, who can help us or obstruct us to reach this goal? Uh, we have impact. So how do we want those actors' behavior to change in order to reach the goal? And lastly, we have deliverables, so functionalities. So what has to be done in order to make this all happen? So example, uh, let's assume that you have an app for runners. So application that helps you track uh, your sport activities. And let's say you, you have a free version of this app and the premium version, so the paid version. And you start with the goal. You will always start with the goal, with the why. And it's uh, 100,000 premium apps sold in three months, so this is your goal. What you do next is think about the actors. So who can help us, right? So we can have here uh, current premium app users. I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, I'm trying to, 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 to tell you what it is here. So pre current premium app users, you, c you have uh, current free app users. And let's stop for a moment. Normally, you should split those groups into smaller ones, more specific ones. Uh, most likely, you should uh, put some personas here. But for the sake of this presentation, let's just use the generic term uh, users, right? Um, so you have them, you have also marketing, so it's uh, some sort of internal department because they so also can help. You can also have uh, an app store reviewer, right? Because uh, if he will ban your app, you, there will be no app on the market, so there goes your great goal, right? Uh, so after you have actors, you move, move along and think about impact. So what do we want our current premium app users to do in order to reach the goal? So they can in invite friends, uh, they can post about uh, activities, uh, so they can post some content, they can recommend our app and this will help. Okay, what next? Current free app users. They can try premium. Well, most likely they will, tr uh, after trying premium, maybe they will turn premium because they will perceive premium app as much better. And moving along, uh, marketing, they can publish some banners or, or sponsor uh, running event like Warsaw Marathon. Tens of thousands of people who are running. Great target. So this, this can... Uh, this can, uh, you can you can have many ideas what to do about it. Um, and after actors, of course, there should be a lot more actors, right? Uh, after actors, you think about uh, you, you think about uh, deliverables, so functionalities, so uh, inviting friends. We can have something like member get member. So if you invite free friends, you will have free months for free, and so on and so on. You can you can have some uh, team competition. So you want to invite friends because you want to make a team and compete in some kind of a contest, and so on. So you move along with more and more details, functionalities. Um, uh, like recommending app, of course, there's a rating in App Store, so you need some sort of notifi notification after a, a week. Uh, if you want uh, people to perceive a premium app as much better, maybe you should remove some features from the free app. Uh, and somewhere in between here, you should decide which impact is most likely help us to reach the goal. And you can do it in many ways, like uh, dot voting or business value metrics. But concentrate on one impact that is very interesting and then that, that can help us. So uh, after doing that, you can go farther into details and, uh, and write more functionalities and deliverables. So what you end up, thanks to this technique, is uh, more ideas, because there are many people with different set of skills, with different perspectives, so they can give many ideas, and you have engaged people, which is very important. All right, so uh, we have a vision, we have a plan, we have a roadmap. What's next? Well, we sit down to work and try to deliver the project, and how does it look like? How, how does a typical working process look like? 
It's uh, research, it's design, it's uh, development and testing, right? And what often happens is that researchers research, designers design, developers develop and testers test. And if they do only this thing, we have silos. And you don't want silos. You want to break down those silos. Why? Because if you have silos, there is no sense of shared responsibility over the product and over the user experience. And you want people to feel responsible for user experience. So you, you do want to break down some of those silos. How can you do that? By asking them to help you uh, throughout the process and to do some work to contribute in other stages of, of the working process. So you can ask a question, okay, but can a developer create, prepare and conduct uh, user research? Well, probably not. But uh, what he can do is to know, uh, get to know uh, uh, his uh, users better, right? Uh, because actually, people like developers are sitting eight hours behind the desk, they're doing their job, right? But nothing, nothing, nothing more. And uh, one of the best things you can do in order to, to make them know the users better is to by, by observation, through observation. And if you're making a usability test with users, so you invite users to perform some tasks and you, uh, you actually observe how they, uh, what problems they have and you record it on, on a videotape, uh, well, people when see it for the first time, they're really blown away because it opens their eyes, because they are seeing real people with real problems. And this changes attitude. So this is why uh, it's good to make them watch how, how is it done. And not only watch, but also listen to users. If you have customer service, um, and you, what you want to do actually is to, to take some, some, uh, some colleagues from your team and to go to customer service, if you're not sitting in the room, and actually I uh, encourage you to sit together, to sit all together, because it's, it's great. And I'm not uh, ironic right now. Um, so you go to customer service, you sit and ask uh, your colleague from the customer service to, to um, put a couple of next uh, clients on speaker, so everyone could hear, and they could hear emotion, they could hear confusion and anger because when a customer calls you, he has a problem. And why he has a problem? Well, mostly, probably because you did something wrong. So when you're sitting there and, and hearing uh, and listening to the user, you think, God damn, he's right. We messed up. We should do something to improve the experience. So it really opens eyes and makes people more and more engaged. What's next? We have user data, right? We can move on to design. And can we design together? Yes, we can. Why? Because everyone is a designer. Everyone actually can draw. Children can draw. So don't tell me that adults cannot. They just don't want to. But what you can do is Again, show them some technique that, that is very, very easy and it's, uh, actually it requires 15 to 30 minutes to perform and it's a lot of fun. So uh, it's called round robin and uh, the situation is that you uh, gather people in groups of three. So, uh, and uh, there should be people with different skills. So in this case we have a business owner, designer and developer. And what they do it's stage one, they draw some sketch. So they, they have a user data, they have a problem, and they want to uh, define some solution, some draw some solution. And they are doing it independently. So everyone has a sheet of paper and a pencil, and they are drawing uh, design. So it's very low fidelity, uh, no big details, uh, ju just to show an idea. And after five or 10 or 15 minutes, it actually depends, depends on you how, how, how much do you need. 
you switch the cards. So you switch the, uh, you pass the sheet of paper to the next person, clockwise. And there goes stage two, so giving feedback. So you get a sheet of paper of your, uh, from your colleague and you're just writing down, oh, I love this part, uh, I don't understand this part, uh, I think we shouldn't have uh, this information, and so on. So typical feedback. So again, after five minutes, what you do is um, pass the sheet of paper to the next person. You're not giving it back to the author, but you're passing it on, so again, clockwise. And the third phase is combine. So you combine your initial idea with ideas of two other people in the room. So what you end up, once again, is much better idea uh, than uh, in case if you did it all by yourself. So this is one. And the other thing, you have engaged people because they did something fun. They did something creative. They have influence on what is going on. So actually 30 minutes and we have, wow, let's go. Great. So uh, we have um, a design. We want to develop the design. And what you want to do probably is to test it. And you want to do it as soon as possible. So it would be probably good to use some uh, guerrilla testing. So the corridor test, so get out to people and see if your uh, design, if your solution is understandable, it, does it work? And uh, guerrilla tests are very easy, they are very quick to perform and conduct, uh, so actually it's, uh, I don't know, one task or two tasks for users, so they are able to perform it in sometimes 10 seconds, sometimes you need uh, a minute or three, but they are very, very short. So uh, you can ask people from your team to help you to conduct those, uh, those tests. And uh, it's enough for them to see once or twice how, I, how are they conducted in order to make, them possible, make it possible to do it by themselves. And again, what you have is more results in a very short time and engaged people. And they are learning from it. So this is great. Um, what I was talking about for the last 20 minutes are actually some small steps, baby steps, that you have to make in order to reach the final goal, which is the user-centered design culture in your organization. But uh, if you will make those baby steps and someone will ask you, hey, so who is taking care of user experience in your company? You will raise up your head very high and proudly answer. Everyone. And this is it. Thank you.